You can be under his favor and still be under pressure. What we see in this commission today is God's favor at work without any pressure around. Two years ago, he started the Ark Project. Two years after, nobody has shed any sweat on the project. They got not the land by their own hand. His hand. <laughs> because he shows favor. To them. <laughs> now, by his favor, the greatest events of your life will be without pressure. Yeah. By divine election, I'm privileged to be the leader of this organization. I have not had one trace of pressure on the ARC project or concern sir, or prayer. <laughs> no. Yet it's happening. How? Favor. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. Favor. How did they get gold? Out of Egypt. I will give these people favor. And they shall not know what it means to be empty. And he gave them favor. Now, in the name of Jesus, the favor of God upon this commission rests upon your life today. And those who will not give their gold that God gave them to serve God, they served the gold and went to the grave. Shamalot, a clan gold. He gave them the gold because he will need it for the tabernacle in the wilderness. Who does my people? They never saw gold in their life. They were fetchers of water and years of wood. <laughs> but they didn't understand that. So they made a golden image out of it and began to worship it. never depend on any of us forever. He's looking for only who can entrust his wealth into his hand for the purpose of building his later house. May each one here be found worthy. May you in person be found worthy. Start from where you are. There are things we pray that don't answer to prayers. I can't pray for you to prosper if you not be a giver. I can't. There's no way any prophet can pray a breakthrough, a financial breakthrough prayer for you when you're not a giver. Forget it. All those fake prophecies won't work. They won't work. No prophetic prophecy can break scriptures. No matter the level of the prophet. Grace to take a strong stand in the covenant so as to enjoy the favor of God flowing freely into your life. Receive it right now. Amen. I pray that God will make out of every one of us a 112 man, a Psalm 112 order of man, Amen. who will live in inheritance for our children's children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bring out your points of contact if you came with them to church. You have brought this to this breakthrough ground, to this ground of favor that cannot be denied. To this globally ranked grand of favor. Ameku saga prakte no galad. Bredizaluteke. You brought this to Jesus. Our source of favor. Therefore, I decree that no works of your hand will be granted again. Yeah. I command fresh lease of life upon every business and career. Yeah. No vocation here shall be granted anymore. Yeah. It's not about your profession or my profession. <laughs> Whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper.
He's a carpenter, he's a tailor, he's a you know, protocol officer, driving vehicles. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. Pastors were known to be paupers in our days. It's no good news to say God called to ministry. They pity you, sir. They greet your parents that God will preserve the remaining. But this one is gone. This one will be a liability. He will come for food, come for bread at home. If he marries, come for children's school fees. You know, now, there was nothing in pastoring that attracts anybody. You are called, you are ready to bear the shame of being branded one who doesn't know what to do. A confused man. But whatever he doeth, he shall come. I said, God, show me the secret. And he showed me. And I began to trade the secret. He didn't just show me to preach it. I, will, I began to trade it. I knew I can never be poor. And one day I heard, they said, the richest pastor in the world is that short man. Somebody told me, I don't hear news. I don't hear news. Somebody told me. They attend the truth of Somebody does not borrow, he doesn't beg, he doesn't lie. So what is wealth? That's wealth. That's wealth. That's wealth. In the precious name of Jesus, as you choose to trade this covenant secret, I decree that your life will not stop changing. Amen. You shall be going from glory to glory. Amen. 1987, the Lord showed me the secret of corporate tithing. Including tithing of churches. Apakatano. I never read in any book and I've read a few books. But I heard from God from Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 8. That was when the heavens opened over our commission. Amen. That was the day. I knew the day. September 4, 1987. It was the fire of the world that entered me. My God. And connected the church to that mystery. And the church began to blossom. The church began to blossom. The church began to blossom. Now we have essence around the world. Not just church building. We don't build just one church. We just build things around the world. One secret. The Lord sent a word to Jacob. Turn him to a nation. May the secret you have gathered during this one month of intensive teaching on the covenant of abundance change your story forever. Because nothing has never ever failed in this commission, nothing will never fail in your life again. Yeah. Nothing will ever fail in your life again. Yeah. That business you are presenting today will keep growing up. Yeah. Everything around you may be going down, but yours will be going up. Yeah. You will only add to this, you will not lose it. God will only add to this in your hand, you'll never lose it. In the time of famine, Israel grew and multiplied exceedingly. What a paradox. Everything was done, they were multiplying. Now, in the name of Jesus, in this global economic downturn, the works of your hand will keep growing. And multiplying exceedingly in the name of Jesus. Wave them to heaven right now. That's how you are flying. That's how the work of your hand is flying. That's a new day, a new day, and a new dawn. In